no contact didn't work. What are we going to do now? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. But first, my name is Clay with modernlove.life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you hit that like button. And while you're down there, make sure you think about subscribing to the channel as well, too, if you're new here. Typically, when people say this to me, it shows me that they're approaching no contact in the wrong way. Um, I know that there are a lot of other dating, relationship coaches, things on the internet, videos on YouTube, all that stuff that will tell you that no contact is supposed to be some sort of like mind game or something that you play with your ex to get them to crawl over broken shards of glass to be with you again. Again, I don't know what the deal is with the broken shards of glass, why people seem to be so fixated on that, but hey, whatever, you know, I'm guessing someone out there wants their ex to crawl over broken shards of glass. If that's you, let me know. And why? Do you really want to get back together with your ex if they need to crawl over broken shards of glass? Oftentimes, some people will approach no contact as if it's something that you do in order to evoke a response from your ex. You cut contact with them in order to get them to miss you and to reach out to you and to contact you and to admit that they still like you, that they still have feelings for you, that they regret um, the breakup, that they want to get back together, you know, all sorts of things like that. And no contact may not work if that is your goal. Why is that? Okay. Um, no contact isn't really demonstrating to your ex that they are walking back into a relationship or a dynamic that's different than the one that they walked out of in the first place. All it's doing is you cutting contact with your ex and hoping for the best. Um, will it allow your ex's positive feelings for you to resurface and for them to say, oh, hey, I kind of miss you. It wasn't that bad. I, you know, miss spending time with you. Sure, it can happen, but it's not a guarantee. What does help is to actually take the time that you're using for no contact to do things like work on your own emotional healing, getting out of damage control mode. I mean, that's a big one. You need to get out of damage control mode if you're in damage control mode, okay? Um, if you do no contact and you're in damage control mode and then you come out of no contact and you're still in damage control mode, your ex is not going to want to interact with you. They're going to say, wow, you are exactly the same person that I didn't want to talk to a month ago. Not interested. Um, so you need to get out of damage control mode. That is like mission critical thing number one if, uh, if you're having a hard time connecting with your ex, okay? Getting out of damage control mode. Um, number two. You want to also demonstrate to them that they're not walking back into the same dynamic that they walked out of in the first place. How do you do that? Well, obviously you need to change the, dy the dynamic. That means like what wasn't working? Were you too maybe relationship focused? Were you too focused on outcome? Were you too um, attached to like the idea of getting back together that you were like overlooking where your ex is at emotionally? And if that's the case, that can definitely be a big problem. You know, you might want to work on those advanced relational skills that we've talked about in our series up there. You may want to check that out. Um, but you want to really make sure that you work through these things because they can really hold you back. If you reach the end of no contact and, you know, it didn't work, um, that is to say your ex didn't reach out to you, contact you, crack under the pressure, crawl over those broken shards of glass. Someone needs to sweep those up, by the way. If that happens, then you may have to actually contact your ex. You may need to do this. You may need to take the initiative and do this, okay? Um, I know that some people want their ex to contact them. Some people are really kind of keen on this idea and they say, okay, you know, I, I, I want my ex to reach out to me. I want them to initiate to me. But here's the thing. If your ex broke up with you and they don't want to be in a relationship with you and you do want to be in a relationship with them, you kind of see something that's not adding up here. And if you want to change their opinion to make them actually see a future with you, then you need to be the one to take the initiative and to change that, dy that dynamic and say, okay, I know that you didn't want to be in a, in a relationship with me before, but you know, hey, let's have some good interactions and let's see where this leads us. I mean, don't literally say that, but that's the kind of message that you wanna send out to your ex. So you want to definitely be able to contact them after no contact, initiate some sort of contact. 
Um, you want to do this in a way that is not relationship focused. It's not too heavy. It's not, um, you know, many, many of these things that we've talked about in our previous video on, you know, when your ex doesn't respond to your texts. I'll go ahead and link to that up there. Um, but you want to make sure that you're thoughtful about these things. Oftentimes, people will try to make the first message that they send to their ex after something like no contact do all the work, right? Um, and the, the purpose of that first message isn't to get you and your ex back together. The, first, the purpose of that first message is simply just to get the two of you talking so that they can get comfortable communicating with you. And as they get comfortable communicating with you, they can start to relax and lower their guard and get to the point where the two of you can meet up in person or maybe talk on the phone or, you know, things like that. You know, move up that hierarchy of communication because I don't want you stuck texting forever. Um, another thing that you also want to be mindful of is not to be relationship focused when you're interacting with your ex um, after no contact. Now, again, relationship focused means that you're focused on that outcome of getting back together. That is like the laser focused thing that you're zeroing in on. Um, and I know that you do want to get back together if you're watching this video. I mean, most likely. Um, but um, if, if that's your sole focus, your ex is going to feel not recognized. They're going to believe that you're not recognizing their emotions, where they're at, what they're feeling, all of that stuff. And if that happens, then they're going to start to think that they are a means to an end for you to feel good, that you want the relationship and they are kind of the stepping stone that you need to use in order to get the relationship, that they're just kind of like the warm body that's filling up space so that you can kind of tick the box and be in a relationship. That doesn't feel good. So don't be relationship focused. Instead, be connection focused. Take an interest in where your ex is emotionally and actually connect with them on an emotional level. I mean, if you've done active no contact and not passive no contact, then this should be really, really obvious and easy for you. Um, you know, you may want to check out our whole series on, on the no contact rule up there. We go into that in a lot more detail. Um, but you want to think about these things, okay? Just because no contact, you know, didn't work, your ex didn't crawl over those broken shards of glass or whatever, um, it doesn't mean that you can't get back together. It just means that, like, okay, there's still more stuff to do here. Maybe the time in no contact was helpful at reducing your ex's resistance towards interacting with you. Maybe it was helpful in giving you some time to get out of damage control mode. Hopefully it was helpful in making sure that you got the time to kind of put yourself in order, work on those advanced relational skills, learn how to love your life, all of that good stuff. Um, but you can't count on no contact, just doing all of the work and making your ex want to be in a relationship with you again. Can it happen? Sure. Does it happen? Yes. I mean, even me with my, you know, big ex that I talk about in many of these videos, um, the very first time I did no contact, I was, I was like totally scared out of my mind. Um, I, I don't know, I had this irrational belief that she'd forget about me and that, um, you know, the five years that we were together at that point, um, she would just like, who are you? What? What? Did we spend five years together? I, I, you know, there's all these irrational fears that you have about no contact. Um, but she actually did reach out to me after um, a couple of weeks. I don't remember exactly how many days it was because, um, you know, it was a long time ago, but um, she did reach out to me. And, you know, thank goodness I was actually putting my life in order and pulling myself together so that we were actually able to have positive interactions because you have to demonstrate to your ex that they are not walking back into the same relationship that they walked out of in the first place. Okay, you have to demonstrate this, not tell this to them, but demonstrate it through your actions, through your behaviors, through how you behave and respond and interact with them. Okay, this is very, very, very critical. So if no contact didn't work, you want to um, be willing to initiate contact. Look at how you are contacting your ex. Is it likely to inspire them to want to be in communication with you? Or is it likely to inspire them to shut down and pull away? You have to think about these things. Okay, so um, that's what I'd recommend if no contact didn't work for you. Um, if you like this video, of course, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And you may want to check out this series that we did on no contact. Um, it goes into a lot of 
details about a lot of nuances and stuff like that, or you may want to check out this video over here. But once again, my name is Clay. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll talk to you next time.